Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my corner of the internet once again. My name is Jason and today we're back with some more Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall. Last time we completed our quest for Persine and got ourselves the ring and I came into this small little town um, and we've, uh, I basically stayed, I spent actually a whole day here. I did that a little off camera. Basically I wanted to repair my uh, dagger because it was kind of worn down. So that's been done. I tried to loot the shop. Uh, oh, I did. I stole a couple books from it and I think it's about time we jump back on to the main quest. Now, uh, we had gotten a tip in, uh, well, we got, we got a tip. We talked to King Lysandus before, and he told us that his killer was Lord Woodborne of Wayrest. And this guy's got to pay. So, uh, we, we heard that he's got a place off in, um, well, in Wayrest. He's got a castle somewhere off in, in um, in that region. I'm trying to remember. Oh, there's way rest. It's all the way over there. I can't remember where we're at. Oh, yes. I believe we're back. Are we back over in Daggerfall? I think we are. Let me take a quick look here. Uh, yeah, I think we are. Luckily, we do have Hercene's ring now, which means we don't need to worry about having to transform all the time. So I can just go ahead and just pick a place and head on over to it in Wayrest. Uh, I'm kind of curious, though. Um, he has a castle, so I'm, I'm curious if I type in castle. There's no place on our, my map by that name. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering. I'm like, it's probably listed as a dungeon. And there's not a whole lot of dungeons, to be honest, in uh, in Wayrest by the looks of things. So, I, I'm gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and look at uh, Woodborn Hall. Hmm. Let me see. Woodborn Hall. I wonder if some gentleman by the name of Lord Woodborn would have a place called Woodborn Hall. You know what? I I, I feel like that's a, that's a uh, scary assumption to make. And if I... I, I I'm going to take a look at the other locations just to make sure that's not something else with him named after the guy because, no, nah, I don't think there is. Uh, we also notice there's a color difference between this one and the others. The other ones are small, like, cemeteries and graveyards uh, as evidence, you know, by their names up at the top and the fact that they are colored in a dark red. This appears to be the only dungeon within Wayrest that has this coloring. So we're going to go ahead and travel all the way over there. It's going to take us 18 days. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. We'll do so recklessly. Why? Because I don't feel like wasting as much time. And I am fortified, among other things. And this looks like uh, Mr. Woodborne's castle place. Now, it says we have we have two choices. One, we could go ahead and kill the guy. It also says we could go ahead and humiliate him, right? Because it's, it doesn't have to be death. It just has to be, you know, a severe blow, of, uh, you know, for vengeance sake. Uh, so, I'm wondering if we go in here, you know, swing our sword and stuff, is this where we're supposed to come first? Or is there maybe, maybe we need to stop at a town. I don't know. Let's go ahead and in, and then we can, uh, figure that all out later. Um, we're gonna go ahead and save the game as dungeon, even though there's enemies, there's guys right in front of us. Uh, there's a big statue over there, there's a guy standing here, and... Oh, looks, looks like we're being attacked by an orc, that's cool. Hey, orc guy, how's it going? Uh, orc warlord just died. So this is in, this is interesting. Uh, we now see that uh, Mr. Woodborn is working with the orcs, and I don't know if I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess as as of this game, the orcs are kind of the enemies of everyone. Um, you know, in later games, they're they're kind of a little bit more integrated and stuff. So I don't know. Should I, should I take a, a view of the time where orcs are supposed to be the bad guys, or do I say, darn, I'm killing more orcs? Because that last orc I dealt with. He seemed like a genuinely nice fellow. So, let's see, what have we got here? We've got three statues. We've got some lizard-looking guy. We've got some other guy who's got claws. And we got this lady here who's got four arms and is holding fire. Uh, what is the name of that, um... What is the name of that goddess? Is it, uh, Callie? No. She... No. There's, there's some goddess that has four arms. I just... I, I know this stuff because... I don't know things. Uh, alright, so this platform seems to be a little bit up off the ground. I don't think I can... Can I climb up that? I don't think it would do me much good because I don't have, um... Uh... Like, I, I could go ahead... Oh, I could go oh, go ahead and just sort of levitate my way up. However, I don't see how helpful that would be. Um... But I guess... Uh, I, I, my, sorry, it's incredibly helpful. But for whatever reason I have it in my head that I would levitate up onto the platform and then I use a lever to make it go up like an elevator. And then I'm like, well, if it's if I don't see any lever, it's not going to go up like an elevator. I'm like, man, I guess I'm stuck on the main floor. Completely disregarding the fact that I just talked about using levitation. Uh, but you know what? 
I think it's it's best just to go ahead and find the uh, the easiest way through this. You know, take the uh, the path of least resistance, which is basically just going straight through uh, the door. Uh, as strange as that might sound, it's, it's, <laughs> the path of least resistance is walking in through the front door. Uh, I don't really see anything here. Interesting. The guy is wearing two two sets of is that chainmail? Yeah, two sets of uh, wait, is that three? Yeah, he's wearing three. <laughs> <laughs> chain rail. Uh, basically, uh, torso pieces. I'm not gonna try to pronounce that again. Alright, so it looks like we got blood on the ground and, uh, two doors. I, actually, you know, I might need to go ahead and find my way up there. That's, this is an interesting looking, uh, sort of dungeon area. We've got, what, let me, let me, let's take a look at the map here. We've got the one room here. Wait. Over here, we got this big entrance. This is where I came from. Oh, this little side doors. I didn't see these. Okay, there we go. And there's a lever that'll lead me down. Uh, or down, yeah. This elevator here will lead me down. And where does this one lead me? Let's go take a look. And this here has another lever, which looks like it will lead me up. Okay. So I have the choice of either going up or down. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I should consult somebody. I'm not sure which way I should go. Let's go up. So we're gonna hit the lever, we're gonna wait for that thing to come down, we're gonna jump on it, we're gonna hit the lever again, we're gonna go up. Because I don't feel like going down. Because I, I don't know, in my mind I'm thinking, you know, if there's, uh, some big guy and he's like, hey, this is my castle. He would probably situate himself up near the top. And I don't see the, the, the platform coming down. Oh, there it is. Wow, that, that took a while. So this thing's gonna lead me up quite a ways, I think. Alright, let's go ahead and jump on here and head on up. Let's enjoy the ride. Now, last time I, uh, I had mentioned, you know, we were going to go ahead and talk about uh, reputation gain. And uh, I think this kind of go goes back to a little bit of what I was... Uh, do we stop here? Oh, we're going to keep going. Okay. Uh, let's ride this thing all the way to the top. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the middle floors later. Right now I'm just going straight up. Um, you know, I was talking about the, you know, transparency of mechanics before. And... Uh, I think that's probably one of the things that kind of, uh, because last time I said, you know, what's the point of raising your reputation with an area? And, you know, I, it sounded like that I didn't understand anything about the, the, the game in a way. You know, if, if, you, if you know anything about the game, you know, you know, there are some little differences to having a better reputation. Um, you know, if, um, you probably know better than I do because I'm, I'm a kind of doing so, sort of quasi-guessing, quasi-remembering things I've read. Um, and I don't- I didn't have a chance to fact check those things and because the mechanics in the game are not transparent, I'm not able to verify myself, so... Just- just- if- if I'm wrong, go ahead and do the usual- do the usual thing and correct me. Um, and basically stuff like, you know, bartering and, you know, prices in- in an area, uh, will vary based on, you know, your reputation with it. Uh... But as far as I'm aware, that's really the, the, the only major difference. So I guess my, my original uh, point still does sort of stand, you know. It is still overall best to focus your reputation gain on uh, particular particular factions within the, you know, within the game. Like Mage's Guild, uh, Thieves' Guild, um, you know. I, last time, I was actually in an earlier episode, I mentioned, uh, it, it sounded like I was saying that Covens were not factions. Um, it's because I was correcting myself and, you know, you know when you start to say the beginning of like one sentence, and then you start, you finish off with the end of a completely different sentence, but yet it kind of goes together and it makes it sound like you're saying something completely crazy? Yeah, that was that, so, you know, Covens, I could, I could have done, done some quests for, uh, the Coven guy to bring down the price of the, uh, you know, the 200 grand. Uh, but I, I, I didn't. Now, uh, that actually does remind me though, I'm gonna have a bank knocking on my, uh, my door sometime soon if I can't, uh, get the money to repay them. Uh, and I, I don't know if I will repay them, I don't know, I, I'm like, I'm kinda curious, I wanna see what happens if I don't, uh, pay them back. Cause that was, that was a fairly, uh, ch you know, fairly chunky loan I took, took, uh, from them. Alright, what do we got? Elven, Steel... I don't know, it seems like a lot of the, um, the enemies in, in, in these last couple of, uh, dungeons have been really easy, to be honest. And I don't know if that's just because I went ahead and made the switch over to Short Blade or, or what, but, um, there's a lever here and I don't see... 
what it would affect. Let me take a look at my map. So there's not a... I don't think there's a, a, an elevator here. Huh. What do you do? Lever? Okay, I, I pulled it and I don't know what happened, so... Let's go, let's go around and maybe investigate a little bit. Uh, let's see... I don't really see anything, maybe... Uh, let's, let's go back the way we came, let's go back down the elevator and take one of those, uh, side paths. Uh, I'll just do a quick run over here to make sure. Uh, but yeah, so I, I don't really know... I don't know if it's really worth it to, uh, we'll say, really improve my, uh, relationship with some of those other fact, uh, other, we'll say, regions, if you will. Um... And it's, it's hard to keep track of those too because I think the only way you can kind of sort of tell uh, whether or not you're, we'll say, in someone's good graces is to actually just sort of talk to them and kind of try to gleam from the the way they respond to you. Uh, you know exactly what their feelings are. So, I don't know. Uh, reputation gain, I, I, I think it's uh, more well implemented. I guess, well, maybe not implemented. It's, it's, it's more... Um, it's got more depth than it does in, say, uh, Morrowind. However, I feel like the end result is not as impactful. Uh, what the heck? Uh, oh, okay. Now, if I would have died to that, that would have been that would have been hilarious. I'm gonna load my game because I had no intention of walking through a floor. You know, that that that's a bug. I, I, whenever I encounter a bug in D Daggerfall, I reserve the full right to go ahead and uh, we'll say load my my game here. So, let me see, I just got here. Okay, so I saved before I went down. I hit the switch, right? I think I hit the switch. I'll be right back. All right, I wanted to be completely sure. Uh, so, anyways, I'm gonna go this way this time. And, uh, I'm gonna remember if, when I'm stepping on an elevator not to sneak, because, uh, that, that slow speed is gonna send me, uh, falling. Now, uh, what the heck was I just talking about? Oh yeah, I was talking about the, the, the depth. Um, because in, in, in Daggerfall, each, like, you know, each province, each region has its own reputation, uh, which, you know, factors into, all, you know, all kinds of different uh, things, and that impacts that, and you can improve your relationship with all these different factions. There's more factions, there's more ways to, uh, for it to, um, to, we'll say, affect your gameplay than it, it was in Morrowind. However, I don't know. I felt that, I, and I, this, actually, apparently this is just me. But I found that as I went through the game and as my reputation increased, people were be becoming more and more friendly with me. Because Morrowind had a, um, it, it, I think it was just sort of like a, a global uh, reputation. I could have sworn there was a door here. Yeah, there it is. And apparently that doesn't work. Apparently it's actually bugged or something. It does absolutely nothing. But I found that there was a difference in the way that uh, people responded to me. So I, I'm not sure 100% about that. So, you know, it's quite possible that I'm just remembering everything completely wrong and I'm out of my mind and Daggerfall just did it overall better. Um, that, that, that's a complete possibility. But, I don't know. I, I feel like, like so many things, Daggerfall, it, uh, it laid the groundwork, it laid out, the, we'll say, all the features that would be really cool, but didn't quite nail them. And I said that enough, so let's go ahead and, um, let's maybe move on to something different, because I, I, don't, I don't really feel like I've got anything else to add to the, that topic. Hmm, actually, actually, I, I, I think I might. Uh, say, we'll use that sort of as a, as a tangent. To, to kind of go into um, what I feel like the difference is uh, in the Elder Scrolls uh, over time. Because a lot of people like to say um, stuff like, and this, is, this has been the discussion since I started Arena. The whole idea of, you know, Elder Scrolls has been dumbed down, dumbed down. Uh, but you know what, I feel like that's looking at uh, things, you know, very two-dimensionally or one-dimensionally or whatever the heck you want to call it dimensionally. Um, because I feel like games kind of tend to have... Uh, there's, there's, there's kind of two types of depth. There is the, uh, what I would call, like, the depth of mechanics. And then there's what you I would call the depth of the world. And, uh, what I mean by that is... I think I need to go down that elevator. Yep. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, some games, they're very, they're very, there's, they're very mechanically deep. 
but there's not a whole lot to, uh, we'll say, like, uh, the world itself. A, a lot of, we'll say, um, you, you see this maybe a little bit more pronounced in, uh, we'll say, indie games, where they, they tend to focus on either a certain core mechanic and really go nuts with it, or they tend to work on really sort of developing a uh, world or an atmosphere, or re really put a lot of work, we'll say, into the level design. And um, so when you say something like, uh, like, let's, let's go back to Daggerfall, because we're playing Daggerfall, and that's what we should be talking about. Um, oh, here we go. This is where I would have ended up anyways. Successful backstab, I killed the rat, and there's nothing down here. Okay. Hmm. Am I missing something? It's quite possible I'm missing something down here. Uh, I don't think I am. All right. Uh, anything up here? No. All right. So we'll go back up the elevator and uh, look around. Yeah. Well, that, that sounds that sounds like fun. Uh, so, anyways, the um, Daggerfall, for instance, has a, a very has very deep, we'll say, mechanics. You know, there's a lot of different things at play. There's, uh, you know, there's the reputation. There's, uh, when you look at it compared to Arena, it, co it made things a lot more complicated as far as, like, the dice roll calculations went. No longer were you just looking at your stats. You were lo you're looking at uh, your, uh, your, sk your applicable skills as well. And, oh, okay, so wait, if I, if I go straight over to this elevator, uh, if I actually just go straight, no, never mind, I, I got mixed up. So uh, what I want to be doing is going to this elevator and then going back down? Yeah, I think that's about right. I, I, well, I hit some levers, so uh, maybe that opened up something in that main room again. So, anyways, uh, you know, it, it uh, is definitely, we'll say, a lot more, um, has a lot more depth to its mechanics than uh, Arena. Uh, but however, its world, as we've seen, it tends to be very, very repetitive. You know, same kind of texture, same kind of world. Uh, there's a lot of repeating to it. Okay, so I'll jump on here as it comes by and go. So th that this is what I would consider like a case of a game that is uh, has uh, is deep mechanically, but world-wise is not quite as deep. Now, uh, people say you know things got dumbed down when you get to Morrowind, uh, and that in a way is correct, but there's a reason why that it doesn't quite feel the same way. And that's because uh, the mechanics are uh, sort of, we'll say, maybe, I don't want to say dumbed down. They're simplified. They, they Some of the mechanics are removed. You know, there's a bit of, we'll say, a, um, I guess we'll say a culling, if you will, of uh, unused or underutilized mechanics. And basically, those things are sort of removed, but the world becomes a lot deeper. So, what you have is this kind of an offset. There's still a balance there. You know, while things may have become mechanically more simple, the world has become more complex. And as such, it sort of maintains that sort of standard of quality. So, you know, uh, what the heck am I supposed to be doing here? Can, can I do anything with these statues? These statues, are they interactable? No, I don't think so. Uh, let me actually try using my grab mode. Nope, nothing. Uh, but yeah, so... And that's kind of where I, I sort of feel that there's a... Um, a, a line that needs, needs to be sort of considered. This platform here... I, yeah, I was gonna say, I get the feeling that these uh, those switches I was hitting kind of uh, put these platforms into position so that I can get up to the top. That's right, there was an elevator leading down that I didn't go. So if I go through the down elevator, that's probably gonna lead me to the other switch that will lead me to... Ah, that'll get the other platform in position. Alternatively, I could just levitate up there, but um, this is an actually, we'll say, we'll say, an interesting dungeon design sort of thing. So I, I kind of want to at least uh, take advantage of the opportunity of playing something different, of doing something different here. So, um, so yeah, that's why I feel like the change from Morrowind was a little bit more acceptable because uh, the world became deeper and it offset the, the simpli simplification of mechanics. And so the problem comes is when you, uh, we'll say, cut down on the depth of both the mechanics and the world, and that's when things become noticeable. So that, that's, that's sort of a, a theory thing I'm sort of playing around with. I want to maybe, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that sounds like it makes sense? Uh, oh, ow, 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 My health is low. And then I, <laughs> while this is all happening, I'm sitting there going, I don't remember what button to push. What should I push to heal myself? Uh, we're gonna go ahead with backspace so I can just hit, t uh, hit heal. There we go. Now, the reason why I'm not healing all the way up to uh, the top is because unless someone's gonna hit me with, uh, we'll say magic, for the most part, I'm, I'm not gonna get one-shotted. And uh, rather than overheal, basically you have some wasted healing power, uh, I'm just sort of keeping myself, you know, about most, uh, over half full. And that way there, you know, I'm making the most use of my magic, so I don't have to, wow, okay, I can't carry anymore. Because I have too many things on my person, which I should have drawn. Oh, that's right, I stole a bunch of books. I forgot about those. Uh, and a couple other things. All right, well, how much gold is it? 444. Uh, all right. Well, hopefully this dungeon won't be too long. It's not like I have any debt to, to repay to a bank or anything. Uh, but yeah, what you, tell me what you think. Do you think that's, that makes sense? That rather than just saying, oh, the game has been dumbed down, um, you know, or it has been improved. Uh, it, there's more than just one factor to look at. There's a, there is a depth of world that contributes to uh, games being successful as well. Uh, I, a little while back, I played uh, Bioshock, and I know a lot of people love Bioshock, uh, but I found that Bioshock had a very a lot of depth to its world, uh, whereas the mechanics felt kind of clunky to me. Uh, now, because I tend to prefer, I tend to favor mechanics. Uh, doesn't mean I only want mechanics. Uh, it means that it didn't, it didn't score. We'll say a, uh, a, a I don't know, pick a score, a, a, a pick a, a scoring term, a, a, a sporting term, whatever. Uh, it didn't score a touchdown with me. Hey, I'm gonna like. Holy crap! There's like monsters somewhere behind the walls. Oh no! It was right in front of me. I just couldn't see it. Okay, that's cool. Surprise, <laughs> surprise victory. I I'm cool with a surprise victory. Uh, I want to use the gold. Darn it, let me use the gold. It won't let me use the gold. All right, so we're gonna hit that lever, and then we're gonna hit this lever. And that is probably gonna set me up to be able to go all the way up to the top floor. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and heal again because my health has gotten a little bit lower. There we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to this, uh, go to this elevator and then use that to head on up. And we'll go ahead and, uh, there, was, there was another floor to explore before we go back to the main room. However, we're gonna save that for next time. We're gonna go ahead and uh, end things here. What I am gonna do though before we leave is read a book. So if that doesn't interest you, I'll see you next time. Uh, and if it does interest you, well, sit on down and get ready for story time. All right, back in episode 15, now back at the end of episode 15, we read King Edward part one. Um, and this time here, I decided we'd go ahead and read part two. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually maybe even the same author or if there's something up, because I noticed I, I also have King Edward part three, and I believe I have some of the later ones as well. Uh, but this one here does not have the Roman numeral. Part one was a Roman numeral, I believe, and part three is a Roman numeral. However, this one here is written with the standard two. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and read to uh, King Edward part two. So chapter two, uh, and uh, like I said, uh, I did read the first uh, part in um, episode 15. So if you wanna jump back and find out what happened then, you can go ahead and do so. Chapter two, for reunion at first hold. Edward woke to a red sky. The sun was just peeking over the Western mountains. They were nearing a glittering tower, fire flashing from every facet. The dragon veered to fly nearer and and a light flashed several times from the tower's top as they dropped suddenly. Edward's stomach felt very peculiar. He sighed and stirred and felt mor mor moralin? Moralin shift so that his right arm now held Edward. Okay, moral, um, mor mor moralin is uh, holding Edward. Okay, he stretched and yawned. Not much longer now. It's several days by horse from the Crystal Tower to First Hold, but I judge that Akatosh will have us there within the hour. We're not st uh, we're not stopping at the tower? Eric, do not use that name so lightly, not even to me. The Archmagister will not return for days yet. Unicorns are brothers to n are brothers to not as fast as dragons fly. You see the elven homeland at dawn. F Edward's gaze 
roamed the deep green woods and rugged hills. To oh, sorry. There was no sign of habitation. Uh, ha habit habitation. 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 I don't think that's a word. It's lovely, he said politely. But, but not so beautiful as High Rock, he added out of loyalty. And farms? He added out of, out of loyalty and farms? Oh, there's a, like another cutoff. Wow, this book is written terribly. It, it doesn't have the Roman numerals, and it's got writing literally jumping off the pages. Wow, okay. The firstborn live nestled deep in the trees, and they do exit. <laughs> Kidding. Do not tear up the earth and plant anew, but take gladly what air was. No sign of habitation. It's lovely. What? Okay. He added out of loyalty and farm. What? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. It cut off here. The firstborn live nestled deep in the trees and they do not tear, tear up the earth and plant anew, but take gladly what Oriel offers and make return. Ah, the green smell of growing. Indeed, the air was as heady as the wine Edward used to sip from his father's cup before. I'm hungry. I expect so. A bit of shifting, and Morlin's left hand produced a small, leaf-wrapped package. The dusky hand was large and strong, and looked neither human nor animal. Edward sta stared? Stared? I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is. Then took the package gingerly, so as not to touch the hand. He felt Mor Morlin stiffen, and the hand that held Edward relaxed its gr grip? Gro- That doesn't look like an eye. Uh, a bit. Edward felt ashamed of his reaction. It was neither kind nor wise to give offense to the circumstances. Morlin could quite easily drop him overboard. I need to bathe, but so do you, he said stiffly. Morlin was deliberately misinterpreting the reaction. Edward knew. Yes, I'm very dirty. Edward bit into the cake, which proved much better than it looked. My lady's mother used, used to seeing me... My, my lady mother's used... To seeing me like this, at least she used to be, but perhaps I should bathe first. Holy crap, what am I reading? <gasps> oh, this is terrible. I think you will not be offered that choice. Ah, uh, at last. The dragon spread his wings. Sent a huge... Okay, so I'm trying to figure out here. There's a dragon flying. I'm guessing one's holding the other. Edward obviously is not the one flying because he's not the dragon. And... While they're flying, he's opening up a, I don't know, a, a Lord of the Rings inspired leaf wrap and eating some bread. And they're talking about smelling and farms? <laughs> sure. Okay. The dragon spread his wings, sent a huge gout of flame soaring skyward and dropped to earth in a large clearing. The landing was abrupt and jarring. Elves appeared quite suddenly and arms reached up to take him and shag who woke at last, ran frantically in circles, and then sat panting at Edward's feet. A tall elf with fiery hair like copper greeted them formally. Greetings, my lord king. Your lady wife awaits you. Prince Edward, I welcome you to the land of the firstborn on- on people. On people b people. Wait. On b people. May your stay here prove pleasant and productive. Morlin nodded de uh, deferentially. Thank you, my host. My queen has waited long enough. We will go to her now. Morlin's hand on his shoulder steered Edward toward the largest tree he'd ever seen. The trunk was hollow. Steps inside led up. Openings gave out onto more steps and bridges along and among the mighty branches. They proceeded along these until they reached a large canopied platform furnished with seats and chests as if it were a room. A golden-skinned woman smiled at them and waved them in, then left. A tall, slender, pale-skinned, dark-haired woman human woman paced toward them her eyes on edward only edward why did you leave us the cry came from deep inside ringing through him it stopped her several paces from him now her eyes lifted to morlin who said in a harsher tone than edward had yet heard from him thou wilt address thy mother alira crossed quickly to morlin and placed her hands on his cloak all praise to Notorgo for bringing you and my son safely to me. How much more of this terribleness is there? Oh dear goodness, oh dear goodness, what have I done? This is huge! I can't do all this today! Nor do I want to! This is... Ouch! Um... Okay, you know what? We're gonna stop here. Um... 
we're gonna stop here after this part. We're gonna, I'm, I liked to, you know, go ahead and just read a book straight through in one reading, but this one's long and it's a, actually pretty terrible to read. So we're gonna stop here. I'm not gonna subject you to any more of that. So if you like the video, not necessarily the book, if you like the video, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave it a thumbs down. Either way, let me know what you thought in the comment section. And until next time, I would like to ask you all to game on.